Let's take a look how we can build a sitting position from scratch. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with Das Studio. I had a question recently that was, can you show us how to pose a Genesis figure into the sitting position? And I can certainly do that. This is what I've cobbled together in the last like, literally two minutes. And I'm going to show you, talk you through how I did that. This is using the Genesis 9 base figure. You can use Genesis 8 for this as well and other previous figure generations as well. The principle is the same for all of these things. So my immediate recommendation would be rather than to build something from scratch, have a look at your extensive post library and see if there's something that's already 80-90% there and use that as a starting point and then tweak that into what position you'd like your character to be in. I can also understand if you say, hey, I'd really like to do this from scratch because I want to learn how to do posing. I also don't know how this pose was made and I'm getting some weird distortion. So this is something for you. I suppose first, let's have a look how we can turn this guy back into the A pose so that we can start. That happens with your figure selected over here under edit, figure, and then under restore, you have restore figure pose. There's a few related things here. Some people like using zero and then zero figure pose. I don't recommend that because this physically sets every parameter to zero and some default parameters are not at zero. So you may find issues are happening. So always use restore and then restore figure pose. You can also restore the whole figure, but that'll literally put every parameter to its default position, including things like custom character morphs that you've done up. So if you want to reset this back to the Genesis 9 base A pause, then use this. I'm going to use this just in case I had anything. I don't think I did, but you know, just, just wanted to let you know that's how that works. So in order to pose then, I like using a combination of things. One is my universal manipulator or just the rotation manipulator here. I like using either of them. Rotation is kind of nice because I only get the bone rotations. And then I either select the bones and start working. I also like working with this pose tool here, either with the trackball or with any of these rings. That is also possible. And then, of course, my other favorite tool is the power pose tool that I always have standing by here. This lets me select any of my bones on the figure and then with the left click and drag or right click and drag, I can do the most amazing things here. And we'll talk through all of these things. For the sitting position then, I'll go and select my guy's leg here and then I go and use the red dial here, the red rotation, and bring that up a little bit. I'll do that on both sides. And it doesn't have to be symmetric. You can go completely symmetric, but, you know, humans being humans, we're not 100% symmetric all the time. Then I'll take these lower legs and turn them down. Uh, I'm assuming you may have something like a chair here that you could also put in position and then, you know, move my guy around. I think that's, you know, that's, that's his legs kind of bent in the correct position here. I might go and take his upper leg and maybe move that around when he's a little bit relaxed or whatnot so you know whatever the scenery requires then of course his arms wouldn't probably be sticking out like that so we're going to go and grab the upper arm bring that down a little bit notice that we often have more than one bone and i'll, I'll show you a little trick about that so in the in case of my upper arm here i don't only have the upper arm i also have the shoulder bone and that can also be bent and that also has an effect on what my figure looks like. So if one bone doesn't get you to where you want to be, don't be afraid to go to the next higher or the next lower bone to get the position that you want. So then here this lower arm can probably also be brought up to here. We'll talk about the fingers in a second. I'm just going to do the same here. So that upper arm move that down and then also go over to the right shoulder so one bone up and then move that probably down a little bit as well because he's relaxed and then we're going to go and grab the lower arm move that over to maybe here maybe he's grabbing a cup of coffee on the table or whatnot so that then brings us to the hands they're kind of they're very static and sticking out right now so it is very tedious to go in and bend every single bone from every finger because that just, you know, that takes a lot of time. And thankfully, there's a convenience function by way of a controller that DAS have implemented there. The easiest way to access this is, in fact, via PowerPose. So PowerPose has the whole figure here. It also has the hands as well as the head separately. And this is kind of where the power of PowerPose comes in handy. In handy. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Go to the hands and then we can see two hands, the left one and the right one. And I believe this is his 
left hand here with the thumb sticking out. So with these little blue dots, you would move one figure joint. So like if I look at his thumb here, then I can left click and drag this joint and that moves this dot and that moves that joint over here. Let me go and reset that. But there's also these blue dots that have these little star icons around it, like this one and that one and all these. And what they do is they move a whole group of bones. So rather than you having to go through every single joint, you can use this group and then move the whole little finger around. Let me go and switch my manipulator off here so that you can see this better. I'll just go to the selection one here and then you can see his little finger bend just much, much better. So left click and drag. And then this is what that does. And there's another one. I'll reset that here with control Z. There's this one in the middle, which doesn't do this just for one finger. So you've got this on a per finger basis. You also have this for the whole hand. So now left click and drag will move the whole hand inwards and outwards, a so whole finger. So it's like a grasp controller. And that is really nice to add a little bit of natural movement in here. We can do the same on the other hand. There we go. Do whatever your pose requires. If you want to use this as an actual slider, that is also there. I think the correct terminology is grasp. So to find that, select your Genesis figure and then just search in this long list on the parameters tab here, search for grasp. And then you find that under pose controls here, there's left fingers grasp and right fingers grasp. So this is what that does. If you fancy animating this with the timeline, then you can do that here. There's some other exciting convenience functions in here. Perhaps he doesn't just sit right up in the chair. Maybe he's kind of bent over to lean into a conversation or something like that. You can go again to the power pose and then go back to the whole figure. You can use the whole neck group here. So on the head we have three bones that would turn the head we have the actual head at the top here this left right but it doesn't go very far and in real life we wouldn't just move one vertebrae we use a multitude of them in conjunction if we make a movement and if that isn't happening in our 3d figures that is you know that, that's always a dead giveaway that that's off so we've got the top one we've got the middle the neck one here and we have the bottom neck one here, the lower neck, but all of them in conjunction really turn the head around. And that's what this little group slider does. So left click and drag on that. And now he can, he basically moves all three bones at the same time, also up or down. And you can find a slider for that on the parameters tab as well. So if maybe he wants to, you know, lean in on a conversation that's happening on his left hand side, this is his head. But we also probably want to do the same thing for the whole upper body. And once again, there's funky little slider here on the side and that moves the whole torso group around. So left click and drag on up and down. Then the whole torso goes up or down. That's nice. Or it goes to the left. So he moves his whole upper body to the left and says, hey, waiter, where's my coffee? That's how we do that. And then, you know, adjust arms accordingly. So now I've moved my hand into his upper thigh here so we can go and clasp that. If this manipulator, the rotation manipulator gets in the way and you want to do this differently, you can go and leave this on the little node selection tool and then use the pose tool here with left click and drag. You can bend the red or the green dial or you can also with a little bit of practice you can also use the whole trackball here so if you left click and drag on that it doesn't always follow the direction that you're moving your mouse in so it happens to be that if i move my mouse up the arm moves up but it also does other weird things so careful with the trackball that requires a little bit of practice but those are the pause tools that i use and I, you know it's, it, it kind of it kind of goes well to posing your characters. As I said, it's probably the easiest way if you start with a pose that's almost where you want it to be and then put finishing touches on there. Another tip I can give you for making these poses is try to do this on a character without clothing and hair. Any of these things that are parented to the character, you can just go and click this little eyeball icon to disable them and then give your computer a lot less work to move things around. You can also choose to put your character perhaps from the regular full resolution with subdivision into something like base resolution that's under general on the parameters tab under mesh resolution. If you switch this from high resolution to base resolution, then your computer needs to work a lot less heavy and move a lot less polygons around while you're moving. And once you've got the perfect pose, you can switch this back to high resolution. Those are my posing tips for putting a character in a sitting position. We will have other posing tutorials in the future. And until then, I hope I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.